So, let us begin uh, this class. Previously, we had looked at uh, flow equations for the gas dynamic flows and then came to a very important uh, assumption that is made to understand how uh, such flows behave um, uh, to forcing such as pressure variations, area variations. Uh, to understand these concepts, uh, the general assumption that is taken is that across the uh, cross section, uh, the flow remains uh, uniform in velocity, pressure, temperature and so on. That is known as the quasi 1D assumption. Following this, uh, we applied these principles to uh, speed of sound and did a few uh, numericals uh, to understand those concepts. Uh, now, we come to very important uh, concepts of what are known as uh, stagnation conditions and star or uh, sonic uh, conditions and uh, why they are important and um, where are their applications. First, we will begin with um, uh, stagnation conditions. So, uh, uh, the common principle for both of them uh, is uh, the uh, static condition and then you can um, uh, reach the stagnation conditions or um, the uh, sonic conditions through a certain uh, hypothetical process. Uh, so, static conditions are the normal conditions of pressure temperature uh, in uh, the flow in a fluid flow. For example, uh, you have a fluid flowing through a duct here and at any point if you take for example, at this local particular point, if I measure the pressure and temperature, uh, that is uh, the static uh, pressure and uh, temperature. Now, uh, the static pressure and temperature, usually the measurement of these uh, conditions will happen in a direction which is uh, parallel to the um, flow direction. Okay. So, now, uh, if uh, uh, you consider uh, uh, also these uh, static conditions, uh, you do not specifically uh, say uh, static pressure and static temperature uh, and uh, they are normally written as pressure and temperature, it is understood uh, that it is uh, static conditions that uh, one is talking about. So, when uh, you see the descriptions in either text textbooks or uh, numericals, uh, when one describes just pressure and temperature, it means it is the pressure static pressure and uh, static temperature at that uh, particular uh, point. And now, uh, let us uh, come to um, uh, stagnation uh, conditions. Now, at uh, every point in the flow, uh, the, pre the velocities or Mach numbers can be varying, but at each uh, point, one can consider that Hmm. You can have a, a hypothetical process uh, uh, that uh, takes the flow uh, from that particular uh, velocity or Mach number condition to a condition where uh, the velocity is uh, 0 and this is achieved in a reversible adiabatic uh, fashion without any uh, losses. So, that means, uh, if there are no losses and it is reversible adiabatic and no work is done, then uh, it is an isentropic uh, process. So, such a process is um, depicted um, here um, in this uh, T s uh, diagram uh, for uh, taken a typical Mach number uh, which is uh, 1.5, it, it could be any uh, velocity uh, for that uh, matter and uh, when you, uh, so the flow is then decelerated uh, to um, stagnation conditions. Uh, that So, this particular uh, process uh, is called a stagnation process. It is a, a hypothetical process and it can be applied at every uh, point in the uh, flow field. For each point in the flow field, one can define uh, a stagnation uh, temperature and uh, for the same you can also define a uh, stagnation uh, pressure. Uh, now, uh, this uh, even though uh, uh, the by definition we say it is a uh, hypothetical uh, process, this can be achieved in uh, 
several uh, places. Uh, very simple example is at the nose of uh, bodies which are uh, flying or moving through air. So, you have a typical body here and uh, if the if it is moving in air and then uh, air is coming onto it with a particular velocity v and there will always be a, a specific uh, stagnation point on the body and uh, uh, as the air uh, and at the body the um, uh, boundary condition is that the flow uh, should have the same uh, velocity relative velocity with the body uh, where relative velocity is 0 or the same velocity as the body that means the flow stagnates at the stagnation point and uh, this process is uh, can be considered as completely reversible and uh, there is no work done adiabatic uh, condition. So, this is uh, the uh, stagnation uh, point on the flow uh, on, on a body uh, in a flow. Also, the other uh, um, uh, kind of uh, application or places where this is often referred to, uh, referred to uh, is the uh, uh, reservoir conditions. So, when uh, one uh, is trying to create a flow one of, of course, one we have to provide a uh, sort of uh, reservoir or a pressure ratio across uh, the device. So, for example, here I take a reservoir and flow is taken in a duct and then accelerated in a nozzle and it comes out. Okay. So, here inside the ducts and in the nozzles the velocity of the flow can be mm, quite high, but uh, this is fed from high pressure uh, regions or it can also be having high pressure and uh, even high temperature or uh, given temperature. Uh, so, uh, but inside this reservoir uh, the uh, velocities are uh, approximately uh, sort of 0, very very small compared to uh, the ones that happen inside the duct. Mm, then uh, the, uh, these conditions uh, can be uh, referred to as the uh, stagnation conditions P0 and T0 uh, for uh, this particular flow. As a first cut uh, approximation when one uh, analyzes such flows, then uh, uh, the losses in the ducts are initially considered negligible. Uh, so, that this can be taken as the um, uh, stagnation conditions uh, for the flow. So, uh, as we go along and uh, discuss many other problems like variable area ducts and uh, uh, other uh, such uh, applications and nozzles diffusers, these concepts will occur again and again. So, uh, it is important to understand uh, the stagnation conditions, sonic conditions, their differences and uh, their applications. So, uh, uh, to um, sort of uh, uh, re-emphasize, uh, the stagnation uh, process is achieved uh, at any particular point in the flow. Uh, the flow is uh, taken hypothetically from that given uh, velocity, pressure, temperature conditions to a condition uh, where velocity is uh, 0. And then we look at what happens to pressure and temperature. In uh, so, the uh, because uh, from energy considerations we can show uh, that both pressure and uh, temperature uh, increase and they reach uh, the stagnation values. Okay. So, now let us look at the uh, analysis of this uh, uh, stagnation uh, conditions. How do we get them? Is there any uh, relations between uh, the flow conditions and uh, the uh, eventual stagnation pressures and temperatures? So, uh, by definition the um, stagnation process is an isentropic process and no work is done. So, uh, we take the energy equation uh, which is uh, H1 plus V1 square by 2 is equal to H2 plus uh, V2 square by 2 here. Uh, uh, there is no heat added. So, Q dot is 0 and work done is also 0. Now, in this equation 
V1 refers to the static condition, H1 is the static enthalpy and when we consider the stagnation uh, condition, uh, the uh, velocity goes to 0 or V2 goes to 0. So, uh, this condition uh, then this uh, process uh, can be the equation can be written as H plus V square by 2 equal to H naught. So, uh, usually the uh, stagnation conditions are uh, represented by uh, a subscript and a 0. In some places, uh, it is also represented by a subscript uh, S to um, refer to stagnation conditions. While uh, if you refer to only pressure, temperature and the density without any such subscripts, uh, then this refers to uh, the static uh, conditions. So, uh, so this is uh, direct from the energy equation uh, and now uh, this is general, this condition is general for any flow. Now, we go to the particular case that we always uh, describe that is of a uh, perfect gas that is uh, specifically calorically perfect gas where uh, Cp is a constant. So, now if we do that then H can be written as Cp multiplied by temperature. Similarly, stagnation enthalpy can be written as um, Cp T naught. So, making that uh, substitution this becomes Cp T plus V square by 2 is equal to Cp T naught. So, how do we proceed from here and relate this to uh, the uh, Mach number? Uh, this is uh, using the relation that uh, Cp is equal to gamma r by uh, gamma minus 1, Your gamma is the ratio of specific heats for the gas and r is a, a specific gas constant. So, uh, once that is uh, substituted uh, you get this to uh, equations here uh, and uh, we also use the fact that a square is equal to gamma r t. Uh, that speed of sound in a perfect gas is given by um, gamma r t square of the speed of sound. So, uh, this equation uh, then becomes a square a 0 square by gamma minus. So, now dividing this uh, entire uh, equation uh, by uh, gamma minus 1 a square. So, you uh, get uh, v square gamma minus 1 by 2 a square is equal to a 0 square by a square which is T naught by T which is written over here T naught by T is equal to gamma minus 1 by 2 V square by A square and uh, this is nothing but 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M square. So, this is a important relation uh, which relates uh, stagnation temperature uh, to the static temperature as a function of gamma and Mach number. So, the only uh, variables involved here are gamma and Mach number. So, it is a function of uh, gamma and Mach number. Now, uh, once you know the stagnation uh, temperature ratios that is T naught by T, then uh, we can find uh, pressure ratio and uh, density ratio by using the principle of uh, isentropic uh, process. So, for an isentropic process uh, uh, P 2 by P 1 is T 2 by T 1 the whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. So, here the process is from uh, T to T 0 T naught. So, you get uh, P naught by P is equal to uh, T naught by T whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. 
Now t naught by t is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. So, you have uh, the relation for uh, p naught by p with an exponential gamma by gamma minus 1. And similarly, you have the uh, expression for rho naught by rho which is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square a whole power 1 by gamma minus 1. So, this is the exponential for the uh, density uh, ratios. So, uh, now this uh, three uh, equations uh, form the set for uh, defining the stagnation conditions in a calorically perfect uh, gas flow and it can be applied at uh, any point and uh, uh, depending on the flow there can be variations we will soon discuss about a particular variation for the uh, stagnation pressures if it is an adiabatic flow uh, without um, any heat transfer then uh, a condition that is uh, that can be applied is that the stagnation temperature does not change or uh, it remains constant which is uh, directly uh, seen from the um, energy equation. If there is no heat added or work done, H naught uh, will remain a constant. So, uh, that can be very useful uh, for many applications. So, now if you look at uh, the equation, then uh, you can easily make out that from uh, this condition um, that uh, T naught minus T, this value. Uh, is actually uh, v square by 2 cp. So, in uh, the plot that was uh, shown in the TS diagram for a uh, calorically perfect gas, uh, for a perfect gas, so we can uh, really um, see that this uh, ordinate as it um, changes uh, is actually uh, v square by uh, 2 cp. So, this also this uh, height is also an indication of the velocity of the uh, flow when plotted to uh, proper scales. So, now um, how can we find? So, one thing uh, that you can uh, immediately notice that this uh, formulation 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square for temperature ratio is fairly straightforward. But um, for uh, pressure ratios and uh, uh, density ratios, you have exponentials. While calculating, so the way uh, these principles are used is usually that you will know the uh, velocities or Mach numbers, and you have to uh, estimate the uh, stagnation conditions. So that can be applied in uh, different uh, places. Uh, during the numeric uh, computations or numericals uh, or you know the uh, stagnation values and you have to get back the Mach number. These are the two uh, kinds of uh, uh, operations, mathematical operations that need to be performed. While going the forward way that you know the Mach number and uh, getting the um, conditions is quite easy, uh, but uh, the reverse is uh, not uh, that easy for uh, uh, the pressure ratios and uh, uh, density ratios. Of course, uh, with uh, current day uh, uh, calculators and um, computers, these processes are very uh, easy, uh, but the classical way that this was done is usually using uh, tables and charts and uh, graphs. So, uh, they are also they also provide a visual uh, means to see what happens with uh, increasing uh, Mach number to these uh, stagnation uh, properties. Usually, they are given as uh, uh, T by T naught or P by P naught in many uh, places. Um, they can usually be found in the um, at the end and the appendices of uh, all good textbooks. Uh, of gas dynamics and uh, for solving problems uh, uh, one can use those uh, tables uh, to uh, get to these values uh, instead of uh, calculating them uh, by hand every time. Mm. But uh, notice this plot of uh, T 
t by t naught p by p naught and rho by rho naught uh, as Mach number increases all the way from very small Mach numbers to um, very um, high Mach numbers it can increase even higher. Uh, this just shows uh, that um, the uh, pressure uh, the temperature ratio is the one which has a very uh, the uh, sort of increase or in T by T naught its decrease is minimum both rho by rho naught is next which decreases rapidly and P by P naught decreases even more rapidly or uh, if you put it in the other way uh, that is if you look at uh, the ratio of stagnation pressure to the static pressure it increases uh, uh, enormously with increase in uh, Mach number. The other uh, uh, one is if you get a feel for numbers it is very uh, sort of useful uh, and as I um, uh, indicated earlier one of the important applications is uh, to look at uh, the stagnation point in a flow and at that particular point you would get uh, stagnation uh, conditions uh, and let us see what happens if uh, suppose we have uh, the temperature is uh, 300 Kelvin static temperature and uh, suppose you have uh, Mach 10 flows if you do um, the calculation for this uh, you would find that uh, temperature can go quite high uh, it will be of the range of around 6300 uh, Kelvin for Mach number 10 and uh, uh, this is uh, very easily higher than uh, surface temperatures of uh, sun itself. So, these kind of Mach numbers are uh, usually encountered when uh, bodies uh, re-enter uh, the earth's um, surface uh, from space or uh, nowadays even people are talking about hypersonic flight and these Mach numbers are common uh, they can be even greater than this uh, definitely uh, at these high temperatures uh, the uh, high temperature effects become important and as we had discussed in the thermodynamics classes Cp will remain no longer constant but this is indicative of what will happen and uh, very high temperatures can be uh, seen on the uh, nose of such bodies and uh, engineering them is a challenge and one has to look for good uh, high temperature materials and uh, heat shields and uh, so on. So, how do we uh, solve such uh, problems is uh, one way is to use the tables where at the uh, uh, textbooks and the appendices you will have these numbers written and you can read directly for Mach number say 1.5 uh, T by T naught is 0 0.68966. In case uh, you get a Mach number which is in between it is 1.52 or 1.55 then you can uh, do a linear interpolation between uh, these two values it is uh, how you do normally read a uh, table or uh, there are several uh, online calculators available uh, and uh, uh, one of the common ones th uh, that is quite useful is uh, given by this uh, link where uh, they give um, once you enter the Mach number and um, gamma you can get uh, all the relations. Uh, not only for uh, isentropic uh, uh, tables, but for many other cases also that we will come up soon uh, in uh, the following classes. Uh, there is uh, a small ga gas dynamics module uh, that uh, our group has developed and it is available in uh, GitHub and it is written in uh, python. So, one can use many of these online calculators also for uh, looking at uh, numericals. So, uh, coming to um, the specific case of the stagnation pressure, uh, now you if you look at the TS diagram you can immediately make out that for every point in a flow uh, peak, peak t comma s 
or this is any particular uh, pressure and temperature in a TS diagram you can always associate a uh, stagnation condition where the velocity can be taken to be a 0 ok. So, that is the stagnation condition. So, similarly if there is another process another point in the flow which is uh, having P 2 T 2 you can always uh, find out what happens to its pressure and P 0 2 and T 0 2. So, Mm, uh, you can find out its uh, stagnation pressure and stagnation temperature. So, the stagnation points are equivalent uh, thermodynamically equivalent points with velocity equal to 0. So, if you look at this equation uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, first law of thermodynamics this is written for a, a TDS equal to dH minus VDP but uh, this is written for static conditions equivalently you can write the same thing for stagnation conditions uh, that is where t is also it's the stagnation conditions are uh, referred to as total conditions so t t and um, d h t uh, that is total enthalpy and p t which is total uh, pressure so where s is the specific entropy so this equation is written for uh, the total uh, the total conditions or the stagnation conditions uh, for uh, any particular point in the flow. Now, the uh, change in entropy can be resultant of um, energy energy exchange processes and uh, irre irreversibilities. So, there can be irreversibilities in the process and there can be energy exchange ok. So, um, uh, that is how it is written as the total entropy change is written as a sum of these two and uh, also uh, dht is equal to uh, dq plus dw or uh, uh, heat added and work done on the system this is first law of uh, thermodynamics. So, uh, we can uh, substitute for the change in total enthalpy uh, by this uh, heat added and work done. Now, heat added is nothing but uh, the energy exchange process which by the definition of entropy is TDSE. Okay. So, uh, if you introduce that term into this equation and also use the fact that uh, uh, density and specific volume are, are related to each other by uh, this equation, then uh, we get such a formulation that is total temperature multiplied by the total change in uh, entropy which has the components of energy exchange and irreversibilities is uh, plus uh, the change of uh, total pressure uh, 2 uh, divided by the uh, total density is equal to energy exchange processes plus work done. Now, uh, this is algebraically rearranged to uh, uh, terms containing only energy exchange process, terms containing only irreversibilities, work done and the total pressure. So, this equation in total is known as the stagnation pressure and energy equation. So, there is stagnation pressure here and the rest of the terms relate energy and work done. Now, specifically if you look at uh, this equation and take that it is an adiabatic process. In an adiabatic process there is no heat exchange happening. So, uh, the, the change in entropy due to heat exchange is 0. Then uh, work done is also if you take as uh, 0 then this is also 0. So, this then uh, this particular equation then comes down to uh, the change in uh, stagnation pressure is related to uh, the uh, irreversibilities in the system and irreversibilities always give rise to an increase in entropy and you can see that if you really rho t is equal to minus dsi or uh, this term is always positive 
that means um, stagnation pressure the stagnation pressure in a, a real process with the reversibilities always goes down or it decreases and if the uh, process is uh, is reversible then uh, e even all the uh, irreversibilities are zero then stagnation pressure can be considered as a uh, is a is a constant uh, in uh, first order uh, analysis of many cases like the nozzles diffusers uh, consider that the uh, flow through such devices are mm, isentropic that means there are no uh, irreversibilities in the system and it is adiabatic. Mm, so, in those uh, in al analysis um, the stagnation pressure will remain uh, constant also the stagnation temperature will remain uh, constant. So, but uh, in case there are any irreversibilities it always leads to a decrease in uh, stagnation pressure. So, this understanding of the stagnation properties is important and this is applied um, directly to uh, flow measurement through the use of pitot tube which will be discussed in detail in the uh, next class. So, this class uh, we have completed uh, discussions on uh, stagnation conditions for uh, compressible flows.